How's it going my bakers? I hope you're having a great day. Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we'll be testing out an ingredient which quite a few people have been asking me about. So let's go to the kitchen, check it out. Okay, so I got my hands on another ingredient that's commonly used in bread factories. It's soya lecithin. It is commonly used as an emulsifier. An emulsifier is a substance that helps bind fats and liquids together, it helps stabilize the mix. Lecithin commonly comes in two different shapes. It can be either a powder like this, Although the one I have here is a little bit lumpy and sticky, it can also be in a form of syrup and the amounts used will differ between them. Similarly to the ascorbic acid I tested in my previous video, soy lecithin is used as a dough improver or a dough enhancer and I'm not saying you should use it. We're just here to test it and see what it does. In my opinion, using dough enhancers is just like cheating. It takes no skill to add a pinch of this stuff to your bread dough. Now it wouldn't be a very good comparison video if we didn't try some alternatives. Egg yolks are very high in lecithin and they should give us the same or even better results than this processed stuff. And I have demonstrated this in my egg comparison video and I would highly suggest you watch that because I made breads using whole eggs, egg whites and egg yolks and the results were quite surprising. But let's get back to today's experiment. We'll make three breads. On the left here we'll have the control with just flour, water, yeast and salt and a little bit of butter. In the middle, we'll make the dough with soy lecithin and on the right will be the one with the egg yolk. The reason why I'm using butter in all three is because egg yolk contains fat and I wanted to keep things equal. And of course, I have adjusted the amount of butter added to the last dough to compensate for the fat in the egg yolk. And the same goes for the water. So in other words, all three of these bread doughs should weigh almost the same with a difference of just a couple of grams between them. And as ever, this is not a recipe video, this is a comparison video, so I'm not going to be talking you through the steps here. If you do want the recipe, it will be written in the link below the video. We will talk about the effects of lecithin and how to use it when you're making your bread. And in the end, we'll compare the results. Now, as I mentioned in the beginning, lecithin is used in bread factories. It is a cost-effective way of creating larger loaves. Using egg yolks would be far more expensive. It can strengthen gluten. This gives the dough ability to trap more gas inside as it's fermenting and it helps it keep its shape so that it could be fermented for longer and gain more volume. Lecithin can be a good alternative to someone who doesn't eat eggs. I will talk about some other alternatives later on in the video. Now as I mentioned earlier, lecithin is an emulsifier. If used correctly, it will make oil and water stick together. Two things that, as we know, always separate. That's why mayonnaise is made with egg yolks. It is the lecithin in the egg yolk that prevents mayonnaise from splitting. Now, of course, we're not making mayonnaise, we're making bread. And at home, at least, it's made completely differently. We're not whisking anything, unlike mayonnaise or any dressing. We're actually kneading. And if you try to make mayonnaise by just stirring it slowly, it will never come together, even if you use egg yolks. I'm, of course, no scientist, but I would wager that it works the same way in bread dough, in that if you kneaded it by hand, like I'm doing here, the emulsifying effect of lecithin shouldn't really be doing anything, but don't quote me on that. Now what I do know for a fact is that breads made in factory use different processes and in a lot of cases we couldn't really call it bread. It is made similarly to a cake, so perhaps an extremely violent and quick mixing or even whipping of the dough. That may just bring out the emulsifying effects of lecithin. That may be the reason why factory made breads are so soft and fluffy. Now speaking of softness, lecithin from eggs or from soya does make your bread crumb softer. It produces a more tightly packed crumb with smaller bubbles and since the dough is stronger it can be left to ferment for longer and the volume gained from that also helps with the softness of the crumb. Similar effects can be achieved by using just a little bit of fat in the dough. Fat of course acts in the opposite way, it weakens gluten. The more you use, the weaker the dough, the more stretchy it will be. It may not be able to expand and keep its shape like one made with lecithin would but because it's loose and the gluten strands are short, it will expand more as it's baking, producing a finer, more even crumb, which is more tightly packed and very soft. Now there are two other options. If you don't want to use lecithin or fat in your dough, you can use a dough enhancer like Yudane or Tangzhong. Those are made by mixing part of the flour in the recipe with hot or boiling water. That mix is left to cool down and then added to the final dough. It produces amazingly soft breads without using any other additives. You can find a full video about it in the Principles of Baking playlist, so check it out if you are interested. I guess my point here is that there are different ways of achieving the same result, or similar results. And grabbing a processed powder off the shelf and chucking it in your dough would be the last thing you should do. 
If you really want the benefits of lecithin, perhaps use the egg yolk, that is if you can. Of course we haven't seen the results yet, maybe the lecithin performs better. I guess now we should talk about the use of these ingredients. I have read various websites with various instructions. Some say that you should use 0.2 of a percent in baker's percentage of lecithin in your bread dough. Some go as high as 3%. I used 0.6%. I didn't want to lowball it, because when I was testing vitamin C, which also needs to be used in very small quantities, I ended up not seeing any results when using the bottom end of the recommended dosage. When it comes to the egg yolks, 100 grams is meant to contain 5 to 8 grams of lecithin. One egg yolk is about 15 to 18 grams. So you could say that one egg yolk has about one gram of lecithin. And since I used one gram of soy lecithin in the other recipe, this should technically be pretty much an equal match. Then again, the lecithin qualities and characteristics in egg yolk are probably different from soya. I don't know enough about that to be able to comment though. I'm just a backyard scientist. I just put things in practice and see if they work that way. Alright, so let's get back to our breads for a minute here. The one with the egg yolk was rising most rapidly. And to be honest, it was much warmer than the other two. It's not because it contained egg yolk. The second one to be ready was the one with soy lecithin. Fermentation speed, of course, should never be increased. A longer and slower fermentation will produce a better loaf, a more tasty loaf. Well, let's bake the final one. And here they all are. As you can see, there are some clear differences between them. The one with the egg yolk is far bigger than the other two. And the crust of it is darker too. That's because of the egg yolk. Let's cut them open and see what they look like on the inside. To my surprise, the soy lecithin loaf was very similar to the loaf with no lecithin. At least in volume. If we compare them closely, then it does appear that the loaf with soy lecithin has a more tightly packed crumb. But it's a very subtle difference. It does confirm what I was talking about earlier though. A tighter, finer crumb, which is slightly softer. Now the real winner here is the loaf made with egg yolk. It has a beautiful crumb. It's so soft and squishy. And because the loaf is so much bigger, it feels very light. The texture of the first two is very similar. I don't feel any difference when tearing them open. The egg yolk loaf, on the other hand, feels very light and easy to tear. When it comes to the taste test, Yes, the loaf with egg yolk does taste slightly eggy, but it's not very noticeable. If I didn't know that the egg is there, it would be pretty difficult to tell. The other two taste exactly the same. I was quite unhappy with the performance of the soy lecithin. So I quickly made the loaf in which I doubled the amount of soy lecithin. So I used 2 grams, which equals to 1.2%. Now we can clearly see a different result. The crumb is a lot more tightly packed. It's almost smooth looking. And the loaf has a greater volume. Perhaps the lecithin I used wasn't very strong. Maybe I had kept it in the cupboard for too long and it's lost its strength. Anyhow, I guess the point of this video is that you don't really need it. If you want this kind of crumb, add some fat. Use Yudane or Tang Zhong. They can produce even better results. Or just stick to the egg yolks or eggs. Leave the soy lecithin for the bread factories. So what do you think of the use of soy lecithin? Let me know down in the comments. If you want to see more videos like this one, click right here. Subscribe to the channel click over here. But that's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.